Hello dear students this is Dr Amarpreet Kaur lecturer from Jammu and Kashmir Education Department today i am going to begin with a new chapter and it is going to be very intriguing for you people because most of my students they belong to agrarian families and in kashmir specifically is a trend that most of the people either directly or indirectly they are related to agriculture now some facts about our country india and on which we must feel proud firstly india is an agricultural country that's amazing and secondly 33% of gdp growth it comes from agriculture not only this but 65% of employment is provided by agriculture isn't it amazing now some things that were uh, important in past i will discuss after getting independence from english rulers the one thing that that became a burning issue in india was how to feed such a huge population okay no doubt india is a large country not only in terms of population but also in area but remember that area in that time was not included in cultivable area only few area was uh, able where we can uh, grow the crops okay and moreover there was another issue the varieties of the crops that we were growing were of traditional varieties and the output or the production was very low that was absolutely insufficient to feed the huge number of population so these were the issues at the time of independence so what happened after that in year 1965 there was someone who brought a green revolution he introduced a gene in the wheat variety and this wheat variety was having amazing kinds of features like high productivity it was resistant to water lodging and resistant to pests and other pathogens moreover it was very responsive to fertilizers firstly about this person this person who brought green revolution by introducing new variety of wheat is known as the father of green revolution his name was norman e borlog borlog was working at international center for wheat and maize uh, improvement in mexico he isolated a gene from wheat variety okay this wheat variety it was dwarf firstly okay and the gene he isolated from wheat from this particular wheat which was short in height was known as norinten okay and he introduced it in another wheat variety and got the semi dwarf wheat this variety of wheat it had amazing qualities like high yield it was resistant to lodging and uh, it was resistant to pest and moreover it had smaller growth period right our indian scientist ms swaminathan he worked in collaboration with borlog and brought some varieties in india like sonora 64 and larma rojo 64 and they were modified by gamma mutation what is gamma mutation you people must be aware about gamma rays with gamma rays uh, you know th- the dna of these varieties they were little bit modified and other wheat varieties they were also introduced in india they were sona lika and kalyan sona now about rice a gene responsible for dwarfing of rice was dgo wu gen and it was reported from taiwan the 
this gene which was introduced in uh, different varieties of rice and uh, the modified or high quality varieties of rice were IR8 and IR24 and India we had Jaya and Ratna okay now about sugar cane in northern India the sugar cane was sacrum barberry it had a poor sugar content and yield while in south India sacrum officinarum had a higher sugar content and also it had thicker stems these two species were crossed and a new species was discovered okay which were having the desirable qualities of high sugar high yield thick stem and it was able to grow in northern belt in northern india right now coming to the main topic is plant breeding dear students plant breeding firstly it is done only by some government institution and some private also some private institutes they perform the plant breeding experiments and it is having certain steps like collection of variability or germ plasma then evaluation and selection of parents the third one it is known as cross hybridization the fourth one selection and testing of superior recombinants and the final testing release and commercialization of new varieties okay i will discuss each of the step and these steps are uh, the plant breeding experiments they cannot be performed by a single family okay only some government and some recognized institutes they only perform the plant breeding experiments so here is the first step that is collection of germ plasma the entire collection of plants it can be in the form of plants or also seeds having the diverse characteristic features in a crop is called germ plasma collection okay for example you will take example of a wheat and uh, you will bring a number of grains from different regions or somebody will bring a little paddy uh, paddy plants okay so all this either paddy plants and the seeds they will be included in germ plasma germ plasma must have the following features like they will be cultivated improved varieties number 2 improved varieties that are no more in cultivation okay some our ancestors they were using it but nowadays we are not using those particular seeds the third one it can be old or local or desi varieties or lines that were produced some plant breeders you can also buy rice seeds from some agriculture authorities so it, it that can be also included in germ plasma and another variety is the wild species okay so all that will be included in germ plasma the second step it is evaluation and selection of parents out of the whole germ plasma evaluation is done to identify the plants with desirable combination of characters right these selected plants they are known as parents so out of the these plants one will be like male plant another will be female plant and the plants which are uh, which are unisexual plants there is no need of such differentiation right then the third step is cross hybridization hybridization it is a process in which we cross the two plants to get a third progeny with desired characters okay which will have the characteristic features of both the plants so this is the purpose of hybridization what is happening in it 
pollen grains from the desirable male plant it is collected and um, dusted on the stigma of female plant if a plant is bisexual so what we are doing we are removing the male part and that step it is known as emasculation immediately after em emasculation we are covering the whole plant with bag okay so that this particular plant it will not be infested with uh, with some other pollen grains then what we are doing we are dusting this particular plant with our uh, chosen pollen grains okay and again we do the bagging process clear then next step it is selection and testing of superior recombinants it's a very you can say a hard step and a crucial step because in this step we are selecting only those plants which are which are having the desired characters okay these plants are then self pollinated for several generation till they come to the state of uniformity because you people know that uh, that selfing is the only way to bring uniformity in plants when the plants will be cross hybridized there will be a chance that the genes they will get intermingled but here in uh, self pollinization there will be only a pure line okay then the final step it will be testing and release of new varieties okay before the release of these varieties they are tested by some institute and in our con uh, country india indian council of agriculture research at delhi it carries the test for evaluation okay they grow these selected varieties of plants in the research fields and record their performance under different kind of condition like they take irrigation and uh, pastures so there are different dimensions after evaluation of uh, these plants then the farmers they grow these plants for three seasons okay at several locations and finally then this variety is ready for commercialization okay with this i have completed this introductory lecture about plant breeding hope you people enjoyed if you have any question about it you can visit my website that is www.amarpreetkaur.com